Hey guys, in this video we're going to take a look at how you can create a cryptocurrency portfolio for as little as $500. To do that we're going to take a look at different wallets, exchanges and then I will explain a couple of different portfolio strategies that you could implement for yourselves. it's first for bitcoin for beginners some of you may not recognize me and that's because i have been away for a little while but now i am back and i'm really eager to get on with this video all about how to create a 500 dollars cryptocurrency portfolio now i do have to stress that this is not financial advice i am not a financial advisor this is just my opinion and this should be taken as how i would do it if i was coming into the crypto scene in 2018. so that said let's jump in and take a look at wallet okay so i'm not going to go into too much detail about each of these all i'm going to do is say there are desktop wallets for pcs and laptops as well as mobile wallets that you can cart around on your iphone or android device hardware wallets these are physical electronic wallets that you can carry with you or keep in a safe or safety deposit box and there are paper wallets as well if you would like to know more about each type of these wallets then kevin did post a really interesting graphic on the facebook community page if you are not a member of our facebook community that's a great opportunity to join and say hello to everybody and let us know that you've come over from youtube as well the wallet we're going to take a look at today is jack's liberty wallet or jack's io and the reason for this is they have one wallet however it goes across multiple platforms these platforms include the ios uh, windows and linux as well as a google chrome extension so what you'll need to do is you will need to download the wallet on any of these platforms now in this instance i've done it on desktop and i've done it in windows so i downloaded the installer and i double clicked waited for it to install and then i launched the program and the first thing you see is the terms of service and the privacy policy. So make sure you have a read of these, make sure you are aware of what you're signing up to before you proceed. Then we can go ahead and create a new wallet. And in this instance, I've gone for custom just so I can sort of run you through all the bits that you will need to do. You can just click express and it will allow you to just create a wallet and then you can add various things in afterwards. Here we have a list of currencies that we can add to our wallet, each one will have its own individual wallet because Jax is a multi-asset wallet. See, I've gone with Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Dash in this instance. When you continue on, you have the option of selecting more fiat currencies that you can compare prices to. Being in the UK, I've gone for the pound sterling. From there, it will prompt you to back up your wallet. And when you do this, you'll get a seed phrase that you can back up. One thing to remember is if you lose this seed phrase and you lose your wallet, your hard drive crashes, you will not be able to restore your wallet. It's really, really important that you have these backed up in multiple places and that those places are secure. And then once you've backed up your wallet, you will be asked to create a pin. Make sure it is something that you will remember, but I would avoid dates of birth, anniversaries, or memorable dates because they are things that you know most people use and it's not the most ideal for security purposes. So here you can see the Bitcoin address. You have to make a note of this Bitcoin address because you will need it if you are sending or receiving money from other people or exchanges. Okay, so now you've got your wallet set up where do we buy our bitcoin from and there's two main routes to buying bitcoin you can buy locally um, and you can source deals on websites like localbitcoins.com this is where people around you in a similar state or the same country will sell their bitcoin at a slightly different price to what is available at the exchanges but you can pay in cash or you can pay by paypal and they will send it to your wallet address now obviously you have to be very careful with this because there are a lot of shady characters online and people may you know be setting out to, to scam people or rip you off especially be careful you know if you're meeting somebody in person because you don't know who they are so you know it pays to be very careful the second option locally are bitcoin atms now there's more and more of these popping up all over the place and you can use your debit card you can use cash on some you can buy bitcoin and it will print you a paper wallet or if you have an existing wallet you can send your bitcoin that you've purchased directly to that wallet as well now if we have a look at the online options we're going to focus on exchanges exchanges like coinbase cex and bitfinex now all of these you have to be aware of the kyc or know your customer policy 
This is in line with the anti-money laundering regulations and it's to make sure that you are who you say you are. So when you're creating accounts on certain exchanges, you will be prompted to verify your identity with driving license or passport and somebody will check that to make sure that you are who you say you are. Now, obviously this will take some time. Some places are slightly quicker than others, but you could be waiting 24 to 48 hours. So bear this in mind, you know, and if you are interested in buying Bitcoin for the first time, plan ahead and be aware of the policies of the exchanges that you are signing up to. The exchange that I'm going to talk about is Coinbase, mainly because it's one of the most used and most trusted fiat on-ramps for buying currencies with US dollars or Great British Pounds. You can see on this image that I have a screenshot of a pound sterling wallet and a euro wallet. This is because I'm in the UK, so these are the options that are available to me. You can purchase directly th from this part of the website with a debit card or credit card. However, if you do do that, you will be liable for fees from Coinbase as well as your card issuer and these will add up and they could be quite costly depending on your card issuer. What I suggest on the other hand is that you load your account with whatever currency that you are using via a bank transfer or a bank wire. Again, this will take a little bit more time but you will save money. Once you have done that, you need to go over and visit Coinbase Pro. This is another website separate from Coinbase but part of the family and it's their own exchange. So this allows you to put in various different order types for several different cryptocurrencies and the most important thing about this is the fact that you will pay a very, very minute amount of fees in comparison to what you would have if you bought with a credit or debit card. Okay, so let's say that you've put market order and you've bought your Bitcoin, you spent your $500 and you now own Bitcoin. You have Bitcoin in your Bitcoin wallet in Coinbase. Congratulations. It is that simple. It can take a little bit of time. So just, you know, be patient, but well done. You have bought Bitcoin. Okay, so what now? We have two options. You can withdraw your Bitcoin from Coinbase Pro and send it to the wallet that you created earlier, or you can send your Bitcoin or part of your Bitcoin to another exchange or a couple of other exchanges that offer various different cryptocurrencies, and then you can expand your portfolio from the singular coin. The exchanges that I've got here are Binance, Poloniex, Bitfinex, HitBTC, but there are absolutely loads. Um, you are going to want to take a look at coinmarketcap.com have a look at their exchanges and look at the volume. You know, you want to see liquidity on the exchange because you, you know, you don't want to be putting a buy order in and be waiting for seven days for it to execute. So how do we send the Bitcoin from Coinbase Pro to another exchange or to our wallet? Well, within the website, you will find withdraw funds. If you're sending from a wallet, it will be classed as send, which is my two examples here. You will need to enter the wallet address you are sending to. So the wallet address that we created earlier in the video, we made a note of that wallet address. This is when we would use it. And in the amount, we would put the amount of Bitcoin that we are wanting to send. Make sure that you are aware of the network fees, because obviously once you send that, you are paying miners to process your transaction from your own Bitcoin, which means the amount of Bitcoin that arrives will be slightly different to what you have sent. So don't panic, be aware of that. That is how the network works executed your withdrawal you just need to wait for your Bitcoin to arrive this can take some time especially from exchanges because the exchanges have their own confirmations to do before they send it out to the network this okay so now we've sent it to our second exchange which has lots more altcoins for example what now what should we be looking at here are two of a, like a million different ways you can build a portfolio just going to touch on two different approaches one of which I would consider to be sort of a medium risk this is something that I came across in Data Dash's videos and a couple of other YouTubers online as well. And they recommend 25% of your entire portfolio being invested in the top five coins. And these are high cap coins like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Bitcoin Cash and EOS. Obviously, these will change as time goes on. 50% in medium cap coins. So these are your top 25 coins. These are things like Stellar, Tron, Neo, IOTA, and lots of other coins out there. And then you've got the remaining 25% in low cap coins. So these are anything below that 25, for example, Waves, Bitcoin, Steam, and like loads of others out there. Now, the low risk option I've put together, this is something that I would probably do if I was coming in to the crypto market now. And I would probably hold 50% of, of my entire portfolio in the higher cap coins. For me, my personal choice would be Bitcoin and Ethereum. 30% of the portfolio would be in the, the top 25. And then the remaining 20% would be in the lower market cap coins as well. 
Now I have to stress these are not rules. If you're going to invest, you need to have a breadth of investments. You need to have a diverse portfolio to protect you as an investor. The aim is to invest money for long term. So think about it critically, think about it logically, and just play it safe. Now, again, I'm, I have to stress that, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. This is just my opinion and should only be taken as entertainment purposes. So, you know, if you have a better way or a different strategy, I personally would love to hear it. Uh, feel free to share it in the comments below because I will definitely check it out. So that's it for today's video. Hopefully you found it enjoyable and a little bit informative. So if you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit that thumbs up and why not click subscribe as well. If you hit the bell icon, you will be notified of all of our upcoming videos. I've been Fez for Bitcoin for Beginners. Thank you very much.